This is a pleasure for the Jews to be in a juicy house. So tonight, XPW has been doing the best decision ever to bring the Jews to the juicy house. What? <laughs> oh, say it! Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you again. Fuck you twice. You don't get tired? So suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling, episode 42, The Juice They Called Him. What's up, dude? What's going on? Hey, this is uh, the first time in a long, long time. It's just uh, me and you in the house tonight. Yeah, I have to listen to what you say now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's just me and Threaten with you guys tonight. Uh, we're going to be going over a few of the hottest, hottest wrestling news tidbits. And uh, we got Royal Rumble coming up on oh! Sunday. <laughs> <Fuck off! laughs> I don't really care about the Rumble, but yeah, you'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about it and how much I really don't care, and how much you guys might want to care, and also a little bit of a, a couple bombshells I'm gonna drop on you guys tonight. Don't. So Sren doesn't even know about it, so we're we're I surprised. Know. I barely know where I'm at right now. It's all right. I tested negative. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on to my first story, something we've kind of touched on on the last few episodes with. AEW coming into the mix now as far as being a powerhouse of a promotion and they have the money to buy whatever talent they want. Guys like Bill Goldberg, hell, they got enough money they could probably entertain The Rock if he wasn't such a WWE guy. <laughs> you heard me, you jabroni. <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about, though, is a lot of WWE big superstars. Uh, for instance, I just heard a new one today. Sasha Banks, who's a huge female superstar for them. Um, we got The Revival. We got Maria and Mike Kanellis. Uh, and even now, Velveteen Dream saying he knows what his worth is. And he, until other people realize that, he's refusing to wrestle for NXT. And kind of guy trying to take control of his own destiny, which is, which is pretty cool. But not so cool when... WWE owns the rights to your name and likeness and all that stuff. So that character, you know, hopefully they do something with him inside that. But the the short end of this stick is WWE is trying to counteract all of these people asking out of their contracts and early releases, um, basically by somewhat freezing them. And if they don't want to appear on TV or do anything, they're just going to, hey, we're not going to release you. We're going to hold you much like they did with Neville when he was – on contract. I think he had like basically almost another year left and he wanted out. Wasn't being utilized in the way he sought fit. And they said, All right, you want out of your contract? We're just gonna pay you and let you sit for a long ass time. It's bull. Shit. It's bull. I mean, good for him. You can collect some money guaranteed to do nothing. But Yeah, when- but also when you sit, you know people say that all the time? Yeah. <clears throat> like, yeah, you you're getting paid. You're not you're not getting hurt. You're not out there performing, so there's right. no chance of you getting hurt. But what you are doing is you are not building any sort of heat at all. So you freeze everything. Let's see you're popular and stuff. Am I saying the right thing? Building yeah, heat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not you're just sitting in the background just well you're, fading away slowly. And it's kinda like much like, hey, that'd be great for someone to pay me to do this show so I didn't have to do this show. Yeah. <laughs> but the the way I see it is you're not developing or growing your brand any further. So like it the guy was super hot, super over with the fans. He had turned heel really found his uh, his stroke, if you will, in the WWE and just felt like he wasn't uh, getting recognized for it. You know, when, when they pull your match off the WrestleMania DVD set when it was the best damn wrestling match on the whole thing, it it's kind of fucked up. I would be pissed too. But it's dirty. in my opinion, it's, you know, because you can't, you can't go to, you can't show up at another promotion. You can't really talk about other promotions. You know, they're not going to allow you while you're under contract to go like the high spots and shoot some interviews, some shoots, 
it so it, it it's kind of diminishing to your brand. You know, it's kind of like, well, people know you're out there still, but you're not on TV. They still really like you, but if you're not out there putting yourself out there, what are people getting from you? Yeah, you know. And in a day of social media and having to tell people everything you're doing every second of the day, yeah, disappearing yeah. like that, it's no bueno. Yeah, especially for these wrestlers. I mean, social media is a huge tool for these guys. Yeah. Um, but anyways, long story short, he's out and he's signed with AEW now and. Vince and them boys are trying to, they want to keep everybody in. And I, I think they're trying to sign up all the top indie guys like they've been doing for a long time. And now the AEW's out and everybody's kind of caught wind of that. You have even major players in WWE that don't, they don't want to stay with WWE. I've also heard a, a wrestler, Andrade Cien Almas, who. What'd is, you say? <laughs> Andrade Cien Almas. What did you call me? <laughs> um. Another badass uh, lucha superstar that came over to WWE a couple years ago, tore it up at NXT, is on the main roster now on SmackDown, and supposedly he's out there telling guys like, hey, the top independent dude's looking to go to WWE. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Which is, I mean, and the whole reason for that is because there is AEW now. Yeah. You know, ROH has been around, Impact, a lot of these kind of somewhat second biggest promotions or whatever, but none of these guys really have the money. Uh, well, from what I understand, I guess uh, the Sinclairs who own Sinclair Broadcasting, which is jam-packed with money. They got money out the gills, I guess, but right. they don't want to invest right. too much into the wrestling and signing guys. Whereas AEW seems to be on board with, um, hey, utilizing whatever funds they can get to get quality people and quality talent. And a lot of these WWE guys, you guys, it's exciting because you're going to see them defecting. It's going to be kind of like it was with WCW and WWE where it's like, well, you don't know who's going to end up where. Um, so it's a very interesting situation right now in the pro wrestling world. And WWE, I also just came across this, that guys who are hurt, the amount of time they are hurt, instead of just letting them ride their contracts out, like that's counting as a day you know, that you're signed to your contract, they're freezing those days. So when they do come back and they're ready to go, that, okay, well, you were out for a month. You your contract's up, but you still owe us a month of whatever the hell it is we tell you to do. Which mm. you know they're trying to be shady about it because a lot of a lot of these people are going to want to get out. WWE suffers from what I like to call the the old school WCW syndrome, where you had a Monday night flagship show, three hours of programming plus another two on a well back then it was Thursday night, um, and WWE has a ridiculous amount of in ring programming now. They also have a, a surplus of talent. That even with all the programming they have, they don't utilize the talent. It's it, it's too much. So they need to go somewhere else. So it's good that we got AEW around and ROH um, signing guys like Bandito and stuff, trying to keep it uh, a, a lot of places to work for these dudes, you know? They need it. Yeah, I got a question. In in your opinion, Juice, uh, I am old? right now, WWE, has it been? WWE. Has it ever, other than the WCW days, mm -hmm. has it ever been in a potential crisis like this? Because there is potential for them to... Like another brand uh, promotion, are you saying, that to come yeah, around? And... Not just to come around, but just for them as a business to kind of be in a lot of trouble. Like there, there is a road, there, there is a scenario where the end result is WWE disappears. Right. Do and they came very close to that? with that? Or is that, uh, have they... You, yeah, has that happened in the past? Um, they yeah, and the whole eighty-three weeks of WCW being on top. Yeah, if that would if the momentum of the NWO had that s stuck, and they really got the storyline and, and creative right on that, I think it could have been enough to like, yeah, they could have been the ones who bought. It, it it's weird. It, they could have been the ones that would have bought WWE, and then who knows? Maybe would have seen the same shit that WWE is doing right now because they bought out all the competition. Like they've had some really bad product, but as far as I know, like it's it's WWE is a brand like Coca Cola. You know, it's kind of they've been around for fifty five years. I doubt they're gonna go out of business, right? But they're definitely gonna take a hit. Yeah. And but like I said, it's whatever. It's good for the talent. It's good for wrestling fans because. I was disgruntled for a long time because I was the one guy who never really turned away from watching it. I mean, I, I put less time into it over the years, like past 15 years. Um, I, I'm just speaking purely with WWE because there was it wasn't worth watching, you know? Like coming off of me growing up and graduating high school like in 2001 when you had 
that was like the end of an era. You know, WCW, ECW got bought out. We didn't have any more of the hype, and everything just got stale. And lo and behold, they go into more kid-friendly product, more family-friendly. Uh, they're publicly traded, and it was just kind of a it was a real turnoff. So it was cool to find like TNA and ROH and other things like that that kind of had more straight athletic competition, some of that college humor type shit, and a little more brutal, you know? Yeah. Um, I was jaded just like a lot of people are with them now for a long, long time. I'd say like uh, early, mid-2000s because they just weren't putting it out there, man. And I remember I watched uh, – I didn't watch it live. I watched it a, a week later, uh, WrestleMania from – let, was last year in Florida or the? Uh, I think it's two years ago in Florida. Yeah, two years ago. Cause I yeah, think I watched were... the whole thing, buddy of mine, and then Michael from the bookstore. The three of us went to Michael's, and mm-hmm. he had the WWE pass, and we watched it. And I thought it was gonna be like three hours long. It was like seven. It was yeah. It was like I, I'm gonna lie. It was like six, and we skipped around, and I and it was, you know what? Uh, a couple of matches were pretty good. Was uh, it the one where like, Goldberg? Uh uh-uh. uh Was back? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It was it was like hosted by those three dudes that like dress oh, the, ridiculous. the new day. Yeah. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Yeah, those guys and like uh, the third guy that actually had the the password and paid for the monthly pass. He he like knew everything. He knew all the chants. He knew all the you know when you start saying something, right? And the crowd finishes. But uh, and then I do. I was like, yeah, I did not finish. <laughs> it was so I was like, dude, because I wanted to get back into it. Yeah, this was this was I think when we were first starting to possibly think about maybe maybe it was maybe it wasn't two years ago then. Uh, I remember you telling me the story. Yeah, somewhat. I was just I was bored out of my mind, and I wanted that 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 NWO spot. Yeah, I wanted yeah, that yeah you wanted that buzz, man, or at least like the the luchadors and the athletic right. thing, and and uh, was it. Uh, who's the guy? I'm sorry, the Vince McMahon's like son-in-law. No, Shane? his son Shane. Yeah, like his high flying stuff. I appreciate all that. Right, dude shouldn't be doing that. He doesn't need to. <laughs> but when you're doing that stuff and you're getting crazy, it was super exciting. Mm-hmm. Like, why the hell not? It looks good. Right, he looks good doing it, and you know he's a great heel. Like, why mm-hmm. the hell not? But then, uh, yeah, so I went kind of numb, and then I met you, and then yeah, you know, I had my turnaround with Warrior Wrestling. Right, um, and that was that was just very recent. Yeah, you know, I, and that was super huge. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Uh, the other stuff that you turned me on to, like these independent um, promotions and then mm-hmm. the events and stuff like that, and then like the YouTube shows, that got me interested and got me doing my research and got me going back into the history. But this, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I My point is like WWE versus like, it's WWE versus everything now. Yeah, versus everything. And the everything is really good. And I like how you guys started talking about territorial. Like yeah, you, in the, throughout the United States. Well, the it is because that's uh, how pro wrestling was like back before me and you were even an afterthought, and our dad's nut sacks. <laughs> Yuck! Yuck! Um, it, it's been around forever. That's how wrestling was. You know, the top guy, a Ric Flair or an Andre the Giant's the perfect example. You you went to a territory and you did business with their top heel or their top face until you pretty much wore out your welcome. Like, Hey, how many times can you, you go against the same guy, do the same program, right? Like a month, couple months, however long that run was. And he said, all right, well, I'm going to move to the next city town. Cause there's a territory there. You know, and that's how it was until Vince McMahon took over the then WWWF from his dad, Vince senior. And was like, all right, we're going to make this an international thing. Cause his dad was very much against that. Like they had like the Northeast territory, you know, like the Madison square garden, New York, all that shit. And you had, like, NWA was predominantly south, and AWA was, like, Minnesota area, and on and on and on. Um, but then once, the you know, the 80s boom happened after that first WrestleMania, and people saw, like, what Vince was planning, and it just, he, he snatched up all the guys from these territories, all these top talents. And they be, I, back in the day, like, it, it was, there were super indies back in the day, when I say, like, AWA and stuff. It's kind of weird for me to call them like super indies, but they did have like all this. It's all this huge talent like these guys have now, like AAW gets or Black Label Pro or Warrior Wrestling, and WWE was just plucking these dudes. Um, so they they plucked them, and you know the Hogan era hit, and it was really like explosive, and then it kind of just took everything away. The NWA somewhat evolved in the WCW. And we all know the story with that. Um, AWA went under. Uh, a, l- a lot of promotions did. And you had basically, you know, your smaller local 
anywhere and throughout the United States, like some Joe Schmo who's like, hey, I got a little bit of cash and there's some local dudes that uh, want to run a promotion and we'll do some stuff. So super small scale, you know, like nothing nothing huge like we have now with the quote unquote super indies. Um, but that that was the territory thing. And it's it's come back big time. And it's kind of like the old adage, like history repeats itself. It very much does. Uh, that's what we're seeing right now because you cannot go anywhere in the United States and not, I'd like to have, it'd be awesome to have like a little chart, like pop-up thing where, you know, every state you'd have like your major four or five promotions. Cause even like 10 years ago, it, it wasn't so much like that. And cause a lot of the thing, the big difference with it is now is these promotions are getting attention because the talent pool is so fucking good. Like it was back in the territory d- days, you know, the old school territories. And I think with WWE's product being as stale as it is, even though they have, like, the biggest names in the history of wrestling, names that we'll all fucking remember, you know, your Hogan's, your Sting's, your Macho Man, yeah, Andre the Giant, uh, Jake the Snake, you know, they have Roddy Piper, the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, But these guys coming up are in, like, AEW and Impact and ROH, this is going to be the next crop of those guys. Like it really is. Like I, there was a lot of guys in, let's say the Monday Night War era that were cool and memorable. But I don't think a lot. Of, there was a huge percentile of these guys like there is now of top tier fucking talent. You know, it's it's just ridiculous. It's and it's overwhelming. I mean, shit. You know, we went to Warrior Wrestling and you got overwhelmed. It's I got, like I got I was t- I was tired for like yeah, three days. Yeah, it's so much good shit. But I mean. That's and this is kind of one of the things I want to touch on tonight. Like, um, you know, there's so many wrestling podcasts out there and promotions and everything, and it is, it is a little. Even though you have so much out there, it's so hard to keep up with this stuff. And from week to week and day to day, think of like content and what you're gonna do and what could be innovative and what can be interactive. And uh, so I just want to put that all out there for you guys listening. Um, you know, week to week we do this. It comes straight from my soul, not my whole. And uh, Sometimes, yeah. from <laughs> Sometimes from that hole. Sometimes from that hole. But I just, I hope you guys enjoy it. And I want to let you know, I do, uh, man, it, it's hard work trying to manage everything and, you know, threatening keeping the ship going and sailing. And I just want to send a shout to everybody out there listening and participating. Thank you. Thank much you very love. much. He's he's actually, uh, he's grabbing his breast right now. It's really weird. <laughs> My breast is that's how, he, that's how he says, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I don't like it. But another another bomb I wanted to drop. Is I, uh, I'm also gonna start, uh, and I'm gonna throw a poll up on uh, our pod, or uh, JP Dub pod, at JP Dub podcast on Twitter. There's, I feel like there's a lot of wrestling fans out there that um, kind of share the same uh, hobbies and likes as far as what they do. Um, I believe I think video games is a huge part of them, um, and as I see fit. And believe it or not, most of the time when I do drop these, a lot of a lot of the, this content will still relate to wrestling. For instance, you know, I, I put a poll up for Mortal Kombat 11. They did the big reveal on that. Finish. <laughs> yeah, fight. fight. Uh, very psyched about it. I've been playing fucking Mortal Kombat since I was, the very first game came out on Sega Genesis. You know, A B A C A B B, the Blood Code, <laughs> <laughs> all that shit. Down up, left, left, A right down. Uh, but it was super cool because you have all, all across the board on Twitter, there's tons of wrestlers who were just like I am. They're, they're tweeting about it. They're excited. They're pumped. They're huge gamers. And I think the wrestling community nowadays, a lot of those dudes are huge gamers. AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Xavier Woods from the, the New Day. He has the Up, Up, Down, Down uh, gamer channel, and it's huge on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I want to incorporate more of the pop culture essence and the juice pro wrestling because it all intertwines like Cody uh I know Cody and Brandy Rhodes were at the premiere um he was tweeting how he got a personal invitation for the MK11 stuff so I ran a poll as far as uh guest characters like who would you guys like to see and usually with Mortal Kombat what they've done the last couple of games is uh throw like horror type characters come in so for instance in MKX or MKXL you had uh, Alien, you had Predator, which is super awesome. Jason Jay- Voorhees. In Jason that Voorhees, yeah. badass. Myers. Uh, no, no, Myers no, no, no. Uh, Freddy Krueger was in Part Nine, 
What'd you say, <laughs> bitch? <laughs> You're in my world now, bitch. <laughs> I've got the body and you've got the brain. <laughs> ah, there we go. I got this shit on vinyl, dude. Fresh print style. <laughs> I like that. I like it all. Oh, 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 oh. um, but yeah, they drop a lot of horror guys in there. And so I did this poll and I was asking who would you guys like to see more? And it was between uh, Ash Williams from Evil Dead. Oh, yeah. Which would fucking be awesome. Uh, the huge one, which is the one that has kind of taken the cake, so to speak, Spawn. Oh shit! Yeah. Um, Wasn't he? Oh no, no, never mind. He was in Soul Calibur yeah, too. Yeah, he was in Soul Calibur, which is still awesome. Um, Michael Myers. So we did Spawn, Michael Myers, um, Ash, Ash, and who was the other fucker I picked? Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> I think that's kind of close, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was. I can't remember the fourth guy now. Damn it! It'll come to you. Uh, twenty minutes. Yeah, twenty minutes later. But you guys can go check that out uh, at JP Dub Podcast that's on Twitter. We did, but and that's what kind of got me thinking. Like you know, re- wrestling is everywhere nowadays, and you're gonna see a lot more of that. And so I, I figured, why not involve it more into the show? You know, and I'm not gonna go and like talk about like, oh, well, have you seen Kingdom Hearts is out and blah blah blah. It's it's basically what I'm into, um, and what I think the <laughs> wrestling community is into. You know, fighters are really big, and not to say that these wrestlers aren't in the games like that. It's just it's whatever I see fit. You know, that's the way love goes. <laughs> so. um yeah, I just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Call us, leave us a message at one eight seven two two six seven forty one ninety nine, and uh, yeah, throw your vote out there for Ashley Williams. <laughs> that's what uh, I'm going to see two e two in uh, March. Really? And that's my I got to start my costume this week. Nice. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Um, everybody I had on the list kind of was relevant because they had shit coming out. Right. Like the, the whole Jason deal kind of bombed. Uh, they had a movie in the works, but it. Never happened. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, Ash vs. Evil Dead just wrapped their series just wrapped up, um, and it just makes perfect sense in that right. whole Mortal Kombat universe. Uh, Spawn it makes perfect sense, and everybody's just been like, "God damn, you got to get Spawn in here." Right. And then Michael Myers, another guy. They just had a Halloween movie out. Right. So we'll see what happens. They got a new Child's Play coming out too. Maybe look at Chucky. Don't fuck with see, the Chuck. Have you? Did you see Ready Ready Player One? No, I haven't. Okay. Chucky makes an appearance, baby. Does he? You should watch it just for that. I'll check it out. Yeah. I, well, I, I saw commercials, and there was a lot of people and a lot, a lot of, of stuff. Things. Yeah, yeah. So, Super unexpected, so I wish I didn't spoiler it, but... Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't us, it will be pricks on flicks anyway. It might, yeah. yeah. <laughs> spoiler alert! Well, we, Rude shit! We talked about that. Yeah, they talked about it last... Uh, whenever that came out, last summer. So, uh, next. Yeah, <laughs> next. Um, some more exciting news in the pro wrestling world, uh, the Royal Rumble. It's one of the big four, unfortunately, and it's this Sunday. I will be watching. I won't be excited about it. There isn't really much I can tell anybody about it uh, that you don't know. Um, They're going to have another women's Royal Rumble match. Cool for them. Uh, Not knocking that. Just It's not exciting. I mean, I'm sure you guys can hear it in my fucking voice. Like, (laughs) That's how worn out I am by WWE, and I don't like to use this time to like bash anybody or bash them. But it's just, it, it's just so weird we're in this situation, you know, where there's so much other stuff that I'm excited about and want to promote and get people to understand. Like, hey, there's life outside of WWE, and it's it's starting to happen. You know, I've for going back to when we were talking about the territories and stuff, I felt like this was coming for a long, long time. It's it, and wrestling fans that have sat there and watched and kind of seen every promotion like Impact and ROH go through the ups and downs and the whole, like, imagine this, Rhett, and like the whole being the elite thing when I first turned you on to that. Mm-hmm. We first started talking about All In when that was going to happen last summer, you know, and to what that has evolved into now yeah. is a full-fledged promotion. Right. And the way that they're running this promotion and basing storylines is off of this YouTube show. Like, how weird is that? Like the the game in Billy Corgan has said a million times, like the game has changed the way we consume professional wrestling, just anything in general. And these guys are super creative. And that's why I have much respect for Cody and the young bucks and especially the young bucks to watch them guys who I think they're pretty much the main reason for all of this shit. You know, they got, they joined bullet club. They were super positive. They knew marketing really well. They're great storytellers. And that's why I had to bring in the, the latest addition to the JP Dub um, fans, 
the the audience. What do you call them? The Green Door audience up there. Your little action figure. Oh yeah, we have a bunch of toys in here. <laughs> toys for the boys. Um, yeah, I got the New Japan uh, Hot Topic exclusive Young Bucks up here, and I finally got the red and black. Uh, I'll call it the Bullet Club Blood Splatter Edition. Nice. Uh, it was on sale on Amazon for ten bucks. Still got a Razor Ramon in here. We still got a Razor Ramon yeah. waiting. And for hopefully, it. it stays in here. If you quit <laughs> fucking giving away the toys, <laughs> he gets these badass pop ups. <laughs> and then anytime somebody walks in, he's like, uh, "If you win the game, you get the toy of your choice." And then upon further review, uh, you occasionally throw the game. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I I, I kind of had to do that in the wrestling tournament. You can't be the best, you know, even though I am. I mean, I can't be it all the time. Sometimes I got to let the little man have his day. Well, I know I fixed a couple, so you lose. Yeah, yeah, I think you did. A couple. <laughs> but, yeah, I like uh, – that's a good little segue right here. Um, I do enjoy the games that we've had on. And uh, another thing I'd like you guys to kind of interact and comment about that have listened to previous episodes, what do you think? Would you like to hear more games on the show? And what kind of games would you like to hear? So I'm just going to throw that out there for you Mind guys. games. <laughs> yeah, right? We're going to yeah. get Raven on the podcast. He'll do some fucking mind games. Or Orlando Jordan, he'll do some mind games, all right? <laughs> like, is he a man or woman? We don't know. Um, another quick news tidbit for you. That is delightful, yes. Matt Hardy says he's got the green light to come back. What? Yeah. Supposedly his bones are not fusing together. <laughs> bones. <laughs> Damn bones. Ah! But yeah, that, that's super cool to hear. Um, I just wish it wasn't to WWE, but hey, big money Matt's got to go where the big money is, I guess. A E dub, A E dub, A E dub. <laughs> Very nice. Um, some news on the XFL. They're hiring. They're looking for coaches and star quarterbacks for their eight teams. And the rumor mill has been swirling about who are these guys going to be because if you're not in the NFL, then who the fuck are you? Where are you coming from? <laughs> right? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of college players that get passed up. I think it's it's a cool thing for guys who didn't get a chance to play ball or they're overlooked, whatever the situation may be. I think it's really cool for them to kind of, here's another league. I know it's not the NFL, but you can get in there and maybe get noticed. Um, they're looking for star quarterbacks and coaches. And like I said, uh, the rumor is they want to have all those guys somewhat signed by sometime in March so they can start doing some promo shit and having these guys going around and marketing all that. Yeah. You excited about that, XFL, the return? I, I kind of am. I, I'm just, I would say, I don't know, excited but curious, really interested to see what happens the second time around. I mean, Vince McMahon's a guy that's kind of hard to bet against him. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time I, I think, yeah, it was a total – flop for a damn good reason because it was it wasn't fucking football it was gimmick it was gimmick yeah. and and now the gimmick of this new xfl is just to create a better game and a yeah. funner game for the fans you know like a, a uh what happened in the playoffs you know with the chiefs yeah. and uh the patriots you know everybody's talking about this rule or that rule or that call that fucking sucks and they're trying to look at that and get fans opinions and professionals that are in and out of NFL and college football and all that on how they can make the best game possible. So until we see it, no one's going to know, but I'm, I'm not going to speak ill of it because I think it's a very positive thing for, like I said, people playing football. I mean, anybody hell out here could get in the XFL. You know, you never I'm know. I'm fast. Yeah, you're fast. You're furious. I'm fast. I'm large. <laughs> in oh, yeah. charge. Yeah. They need a new uh, refrigerator. That's <laughs> right. your man to call. It'll be a fucking lineman in the heartbeat. Um, Nikki Bella says she still talks to John Cena about every date she goes on. I just wanted to put that out there. It's not really news. I don't really give a fuck about Weird. it. Weird. Yeah. If if people really do care about this shit, then you're part of the problem. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So as far as news goes, that's pretty much all I got. You got anything that you've heard about? I have one question. What? Craziest surprise person at the Royal Rumble. Do you have <sighs> any people that you think... Uh, who it could be. Um, well, obviously, the one main one that I think a lot of people are going to want to believe that it is is Kenny Omega. I don't think it will be, though. I think he's going to AEW. Um, and if that does happen, I'm probably going to break some shit. Oh, if he runs out? Yeah. 
I just, it would be a terrible reveal. It'd be uh, for an event that people are like, I know it's the big four, but eh, they're like, eh, and then he comes well, out. Yeah, I but I think that would be huge for them. And uh, you know, I I also ran a poll on Twitter at JP Dub Podcast. Who's excited for the Royal Rumble? And it was actually a pretty decent amount of people in favor of it, which is to be expected. Like I said, it's it's the WWE. They're Coca Cola, man. You can't. Yeah. They'll always be there. Um, I know I'm just a small percentile of people who think it's total shit right now, but you know what is my opinion, Mayor? The next guy. I'm who just, else? I'm just someone putting Kenny it out Omega. There. Who else? Um, it's really hard. To, I know Kushida from New Japan Pro Wrestling, part of the Time Splitters. Uh, he would be cool to see turn up. Um, I'm sure they're going to bring up. It's weird because they might. I think with this year. They might have a few more NXT guys come up, and that'll be like their call up to the main roster. It's like, oh, you're in the Rumble, but uh, you know, every year I look forward to the Rumble for one thing, and that's like, which legend are you that you haven't seen in a long time that's just going to show up? Like, you know, is it going to be DDP or whoever? I, it's kind of a tough one, man. I don't know. Got to make a prediction. I think it's going to be Dave Batista. That's a good one. That's a really gonna, good one. He's just going to pop in. But he'll have to get eliminated. I don't think he's going to win. I think he no. is coming back. I think they're he's looking to do a comeback. One more run against Triple H. Yeah. And I know Trips is still hurt, so Aww. I believe. It was like a torn pack or some shit. Oh, shit. It was a disgusting photo. It was like whole half. It was He looked like that fake He-Man figure. Remember the fuck? <laughs> he was all blue or purple. The imposter He-Man. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. But no, I like that. That's a good guess. But the only way I don't see it happening is because the last time he came back, like three or four years ago, he did win the Rumble, and everybody was pissed. Yeah. And they wanted Daniel Bryan to win. He didn't win. Yeah. Even though he went on the WrestleMania to win the title from Batista and Randy Orton, you know, people were pissed. But, yeah, that would be super cool. I, you know, it's tough. I really don't know. I don't know who it could be. Who do you guys want to see? Leave us comments. Tell us. Tell us what you think. Tell us everything. <laughs> did you, can you even hear that? Tell us everything. Um, very faintly. Yeah. That was no good. No, no bueno. Hey, give me no you can pass. <laughs> what? I'll tell you what. I would lose my shit if Jack Black showed oh, up. Nacho man. Libre in the Rumble, dude. That's something that would be so like super cool and off the beaten path. Like if AEW did something like that, like a <laughs> like a Royal Rumble situation, and then you have Jack Black come out and maybe uh, Macaulay Culkin or something. <laughs> oh, here's another quick. Uh, Fun fact for you: There's a guy, a wrestler called Jungle Boy. Do you know? Have you heard about him? No. He is the son of a famous actor from an early '90s drama, TV sitcom, whatever you want to call that. A- a- Alan Thicke's son. I'll give you no, no, no. I'll give you a hint. Robin. Nine hundred two one zero. Yeah. Who's I don't know. Who was one of the hunks? He was kind of the rebel hunk. I don't know. You don't know the characters? I don't know the characters. I know Brenda. I don't know why I know Brenda. I mm-hmm. didn't even know who was Brenda. I don't fucking know either. And I used to watch the shit on Brenda. Too. No, there's no shame in my game. Hey, you saw you saw the retro JP Dub promo I put out, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Saved by the Bell style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty it's awesome. Like it's in the max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell me, Luke oh, Perry. You, Luke Perry's son. Yeah, his son is Jungle Boy, and I believe he just signed a contract with AEW. Good for him. Or they tried to. And something about, like, Luke Perry, like, well, you can't sign a two-year contract because who knows what they're going to do with son, you or something. It's like, yeah. Don't do it, son. It's like, Luke Perry, shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out you of here. You had your time. Yeah, you had your time. Now Let it's... Your son be Jungle Boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, this is Luke Perry, Dylan McKay's son. Oh, I did want to ask you. Mm-hmm. Have you seen on Facebook uh, the Warrior Wrestling backstage footage? Yeah, I did, did check, check it out. It? Yeah, it was super awesome. I've seen, like, two of the videos. Yeah, um, actually tonight, uh, as we're recording tonight on the 21st, I have the uh, exclusive information that I will divulge to you guys, which you're probably, when this airs, you're already going to know this because they're announcing it tonight, but uh, Steve hit me up and he's saying, hey, Juice, I'm going to announce some matchups for Warrior Wrestling 4 during Raw tonight. So kind of curious as to what those might be. And it kind of sucks if Tessa's, suspended like you know the storyline thing impacts mm-hmm. doing like the same shit yeah yeah whether um which is kind of weird and cool at the same time but uh you guys will get some announcements coming here soon and we'll share that in the jp woo and online all our social media with who they're going to announce uh the matchups for but it, i'm sure it's going to be stacked again and have to be there 
again. <laughs> it's like we talked about uh, with JR on episode 41. There's a lot of stuff coming up here. Yeah. Um, the AAW on the 26th is sold out completely. The Lucha Bros versus yeah, LAX. Yeah. Finito, I'm not going to be there, I saw the last advertisement during the day. It was like, one ticket's left. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. One ticket's. Like, why would you even announce that there's one ticket one left? One ticket's left. Because in probably the time it took the text that there's, yeah. or put that post, it was gone. Yeah. You know. I like how it was plural. Yeah, right. One ticket's left. <laughs> Oh, I like it. Better jump on that. Mm-hmm. Somebody did. Maybe yeah. it was Super Mario. Yep. Um, And then we got Black Label Pro, which is coming up February 2nd at the RDS Gym in Crown Point. I'm, I'm going to hit that up for sure so I can confirm I'll at least be at Warrior Wrestling. We'll both be there for that. Yeah, we'll both be there. For WW. <laughs> Where were you when WW4 happened? Uh. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. already... Uh... I already have uh, at least three people more than last time coming with me. Nice. So. I'm excited to have Steve back on the show, too. He's super pumped to come back on and yeah, yeah. let everybody know who he's got coming in. So I don't even have to tell you. I mean, feel free to go check their pages out, but you're going to get it here straight from the horse's mouth pretty soon. Stay pumped. I know you're, you're, you're a horse's love it. mouth. <laughs> I'm a horse's ass! Yeah, you got anything else? What else is in here? There isn't really uh, too much more. Oh, Royal Rumble. Maybe Goldberg could be another one. I, I doubt it'll come back for another run, but I'd be super pumped. I'm thinking it could be Goldberg. I'm thinking it could be... Uh, he was just on the Goldbergs, too, that show, by the way. Was he really? Yeah. <laughs> so you guys can go Hulu that. Super kicking people? Fuck no, Goldberg. Well, I guess he kind of had somewhat of a super sidekick. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> Ask Bret Hart. Super kick to the... <laughs> to, Ooh, to the career. <laughs> yeah, super kick to the shin. <laughs> oh, uh... I actually here's a quick story for you. What was it? Friday night, hung out with Drex Odell. Oh yeah, the Manchester Hooligan. Yeah. Oh yeah, we uh hung out, uh, watched Impact on Twitch. Nice. Which you can, they're on Fridays now. They switched. Uh, they're on the Pursuit channel. And from what Moose was telling us at Warrior Wrestling Ford, they're looking to get a little more edgier, a little more racier. What does that mean? A little sexier. Isn't he already racy? Doesn't he do a bunch of stuff where he's like juggling his balls and then hitting people? Well, yeah, something like that. But I, I still don't think they're bigger, wetter, badder like the JP Dub. Yeah. No, no way, Jose. No way. Whatever happened to that guy? That's a conversation for another time. I don't really care, but I haven't heard or seen him no way, Jose, in a long time. Maybe he's hurt. He was like the Caribbean dancer, dude. You know it would be nuts for Royal Rumble, given that he's been sober for about six or seven years now or five or six Who's years. that? Jake the Snake. Oh, that would and that was his that was his, his thing, like his dream, his goal. Just come in. Oh, that would be awesome. Slap some assholes. A couple maybe DDTs. A little bit. Yeah, a couple DDTs. And get tossed out. Because I know his back is all messed up and stuff. Like his, you know, his body's right. been beaten, but ooh, it'd be nice to see that. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Bray Wyatt come back either. Yeah. Um clean shaven. Yeah, red. No, no, no. I I don't I don't know how they're gonna what they're gonna do. They've why is he wearing a character. tuxedo? <laughs> a Canadian tuxedo. God damn it. Why all this denim? <laughs> Hashtag damn the denim. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Be cool. Dental damn, dental denim. Mm-hmm. Good joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try. Uh, Hornswoggle. Not cool. Is the is Kevin Nash or the Giant, are they able to... Uh, is, are they like well, mobile big show. at all? Big show? Yeah, he'll, he... he's still with them. He's got to be towards the end of his career right now, though. He's still doing stuff? Yeah. Once in a blue moon, he was just, uh, he was back not too long ago. Man. Yeah, because he was, who was he teaming up with? He was a heel. He's he's the type of guy, he goes from heel to face, fuck, man, like three, four times a month, switches mm. back and forth. Yeah. I'm so over the big show, you know? Yeah. People have been over him for a little while now. Yeah. Ten years. <laughs> yeah, ten plus years. Fucking sucks! <laughs> but I think, you know, we could potentially see... Uh, the best uh, Rumble surprise I- I've personally seen, I'm sure a lot of you can agree with this, was when AJ Styles came out. Uh, it was a huge pop. It was a huge moment. And uh, he's had a hell of a career there so far. And I'm kind of hoping he gets out of his shit. He's negotiating contract. <laughs> Get the fuck out, AJ. Go to AEW. Bye-bye. Yeah. Work a less restricted schedule. Spend some time with the familia. 
What's going on with the different promotions now? The big ones like New Japan. Do you know anything about that? Or, um, uh, Lucha Underground is not. There's no. Uh, news that's a good. Airing. Lucha is a good thing. Yeah, that's from what I hear. There's been no new announcement for a season five, a season what? cinco. Yeah, because because all, all the talent's so busy. Well, and to talk about talent, and you know, I, I'm sitting here shitting on WWE for freezing contracts and stuff. Um, Eva Lise, who is one of the female grapplers, participants, fighters. Luchadoras, however you prefer to say it, and Lucha Underground. Um, she was actually a trios champion at one point in time. She's wanting out of her contract, and they are freezing her contract, not allowing her to compete anywhere else. And there's not even, there's no word on a, uh, you know, another season happening. Usually by now they would have at least started tapings or doing something. Right. Um, and I would, I would really, really hate to see Lucha end. Right now, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't. I only watched like maybe a first handful of this uh, past season, um, and I did kind of catch the the end. And for me, it was like, man, they're bringing in too many WWE guys. You know, there's Jack Swagger who ends up becoming the champ at the end of the fucking fourth season. Uh, you had uh, what's his name? Who's the big British guy? The the fucking bad news, Wade Barrett. Um, oh, that guy. Yeah, I'm afraid I got some bad news. That fucking dude. Boo. Yeah, he ends up being like kind of the head mafioso guy or whatever. It's I was I, I don't like seeing that shit. You know, bringing in too many WWE dudes where Lucha was like they had a lot of guys from AAA and a lot of lesser known dudes that they kind of built up, and now these dudes are super huge. Like, uh, you know, John Morrison, ex WWE guy, but when he became Johnny Mundo, it was something a little more special. Uh, Pentagon Junior, Phoenix major fucking players right now and the sky's the limit with those guys brian cage another dude uh kind of re- resurrected vampiro's career um a lot of positives that were going on for them and there's a lot of ways that uh l- the guys at lucha innovated uh the way you consume and watch professional wrestling and storytelling in professional wrestling so if it is indeed done i'll be very fucking disappointed to say the least because I haven't heard anything about it other than negative shit, and even people who are with the company still that are actually on Eva Lisa's side, like, hey, man, she wants to go, let her go. But they're losing a lot of guys, you know? Yeah. So it is what it is. So we're 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 actually in that time in wrestling as far as, like, the bigger promotions, mm-hmm. where other than the Royal Rumble, it's a little bit of a transitional spot. You got to wait till the spring, and then some more stuff will start happening probably. Uh, well, the thing is... it. it Anything can happen anytime right now. Okay. You know, there's a there's a lot of big um pay per views and stuff coming up. That's why, you know, I, I it's like I said earlier, it's hard for me to keep up with every single thing because I miss shit all the time. Right. And I'm like, you know, I'll get something on YouTube or see something on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. I'm like, fuck man, I missed that or damn, I wish I could have watched that. But there's not enough time in the day. It's a weird time to be a wrestling fan because as positive as it is. It's also kind of very negative in a way where it's not enough time in the day, excuse me, to consume the product. Not definitely not enough fucking money to go around to attend all these shows and buy all this fucking merch. So you, you show up and you support and you do what you can when you can. Um, but those are like my big uh, arguments with wrestling right now. It's just it's it's too much, man. So you know I can kind of give you guys a uh, a path that you guys can walk down and figure things out for yourself, what you like or what you don't like. And that's the whole point of interacting and sharing, you know, because you guys will figure out shit that I don't know or maybe turn me on into some some new hot shit, man. I thought I loved some new hot shit, some new Spanish shit. <laughs> I, uh, did, did, you t- <clears throat> did you talk about the Kenny Omega documentary? No. Oh, I did not. That, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely going to. Um, It's like going to be. Uh, out for a second. Right, right. Uh, I believe it airs March 27th on the TSN channel, which is a Canadian channel. And it's it's made by, I believe, is it HBO? I think it's like HBO documentaries, but it's like the Canadian version of it or branch. So it's like in video games where it's like, oh, you know, new Dead Rising is coming out. Oh, it kicks ass, but oh, it, was, uh, it wasn't made by, <laughs> you know, Tech World or whoever, whoever made it. It was like the Canadian substance, like Capcom of Canada or something, you know, <laughs> it's like, ah, what the fuck? Um, but I, I still think this will be good. I think the guy making it is, uh, really kind of put his heart and soul into it and is going to present an awesome film for Kenny Omega fans. And it's, it's 
I think it's a side of uh, there's going to be a lot of shit that we haven't been able to see and maybe a couple sides of Kenny Omega that a lot of people aren't used to seeing. So I'm all ready. Like a Golden Lovers side? Oh, yeah. <laughs> golden Lovers. Uh what is the? Have you seen the trailer for it for the documentary? I have not watched it yet. No, I just, just found out about it. Tonight. Oh, you didn't know anything about it. Well, I, I knew about I knew about um, the documentary, but I had not seen a trailer or anything. Yeah, yet. I, I really do wonder what what could it be about. I mean, I know he's he's one of the up and coming stars, and da da da. And well, he is beloved throughout the world. And... Essentially, the biggest free agent in professional wrestling right now. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know if he's. I would hate to say he's a guy or he's not a guy that, like, hey, this legitimizes your promotion if you sign Kenny Omega, because it very much would. But I think that he's not in that uh, part of his career yet, like a Chris Jericho signed with AEW. That was like, all right, do you got a pure fucking legend who's still, dude, the guy's like 45 or whatever years old and he's still going hard, can still do this move set, do great stuff in wrestling. I think Kenny Omega is just the hottest wrestler on the fucking planet right now as far as talent and charisma and every he's the complete fucking package. So yeah, it's 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 hard telling, man. Where he's gonna go, what he's gonna do. I just uh two weeks ago I watched a YouTube five part series on the history of the Bullet Club, how it all went down, how it Oh happened, yeah, from New today. Japan. Yeah. Yeah, those are really cool, isn't they're, it? Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah, they did. I'm sure they originally like one aired spot with commercials, but on YouTube they split it up into like five or six videos. Right, right. Well, that's the way I saw it too. It was yeah. uh, I forgot what they called it. Uh, it's Kevin Kelly who does a lot of the announcing now with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah, get that quick, get that quick education. Yeah, and they also do one on a couple of factions because that's the thing with uh, New Japan is they're really big on factions. Dude, mm-hmm. there's like a million different fucking groups over there, which is hey, it's fucking cool. They didn't have shit like that. There would have never been an NWO because that's straight up where the gimmick for the NWO came from, you know. Right. Um, yeah, so I think uh, you're going to see a lot more of that kind of bleeding into American wrestling. I think ROH is going to start doing that a lot more. Um, have a lot more factions, you know. WWE and a lot of other people I've noticed are kind of using the. Uh, I was having this argument the other night too. Like, do you consider a three-person stable or whatever you want to call it, a quote-unquote faction, if it's just three guys? No. Like, no. It would be what like... about four? I would say four would have to be. Okay. Yeah. This well, one. but it's it's weird because, I mean, the, the original NWO then wasn't a faction. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, the New Day, they're not a faction. And this argument came up because it's like... Uh, if you think about it, like, Lucha Libre's always had, like, trios matches, the triple tag teams and stuff. But in the... The states, it was really like the fabulous Freebirds that kind of brought that into the U.S. And they they had you know what's still saying today the Freebird rule, where any one of the three or any two of the three, I'm sorry, if if they hold titles, can defend these belts. You could just switch out, and it, which I always thought was cool because in a way it keeps it kind of like a uh, almost like an MMA team or something like that. You know, this is your team, and you know this guy's gonna go out and do something one night, and this other guy's gonna sub in the other night. It kind of makes it a little more legitimate in my eyes, you know. But I always have this argument, like, do you consider a three-person tandem a faction or a tag team? It would have to be a tag team still. I would say tag team. I would think. Yeah. yeah. Tag team or group, not faction. Yeah. My favorite. Not enough people. <laughs> right? My favorite being the Freebirds. I just, I can't help it. <laughs> uh, last question about, is, is this a shitty rumor or not? Is it a shit or a shoot? pa pa Bye-bye. <laughs> AEW is going to need announcers, right? Oh, I, I know where you're going people, with this. One of the people that they've been talking about, I don't know if you if if we're on the same page, but they're saying Booker T is trying to get it. Oh, Have you heard that rumor? What? You want some of this sucker Booker T up in here? Let me tell you, Booker T and the E-Dub, dog. Oh, shucky ducky. <laughs> no, I said it's a five-time, five-time, five-time world champion. You know Booker T want to be a part of that, man. Let me tell you. Thanks, Booker. Man, Booker drops in. Jesus. Everybody's coming in. Um, Yeah, I did. I, I actually saw an interview because Booker does a podcast, I believe, too. Mm-hmm. Um, He wants a piece. He wants a piece of that pie. Yeah. Everybody does. You're gonna, This is what you're going to now. Here's the real test. And I, it's funny because I actually just watched the 
the new I think it's called what is it fresh gear or ring gear something the new being the elite I forgot what the episode's entitled but uh they kind of spoof themselves and what everybody's thinking in the speculation it's like it shows Cody in the parking lot and there's a wrestler indie guy named Peter Avalon and Cody's talking he's like yeah man you know I'd like to sign you you know like make your dreams come true, whatever. He's like, really? He's like, yeah, man. I'm like giving him a jacket and shit. Uh, it's like, uh, how's, how about a million dollars to sign? It's like, really? Like, yeah. He's like, all right, it's great. Walks off. Nick and Matt Jackson come up. We're like, hey, man, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm just signing talent, you know? And they're like, really? Like, you know, I thought it was supposed to be us three talking. He's like, well, I'm the executive vice president. And they're like, well, we're like the co-executive vice president, you know. So they're having this bickering warfare about who who can book who and, well, not book, but sign, you know. And he's like, oh, you're just throwing money out to anybody. Like, How much do you pay? He's like, a million dollars. Like, what? A million dollars? Like, what? It's like we had to pay 50 grand for the fucking pyro for the rally, you know. <laughs> um, and it was just a real funny thing because they're spoofing the fact that everybody, there are some people who think that they don't know what they're doing, you know. Um, and. Cody even says something like, oh, we're kind of having like a WCW moment right here. Like, don't, you know, he's like, man, I didn't think it was going to be this fucking hard. And it's like, Cody's like, yeah, no shit. And then they walk off and then the music starts, you know, and the episode <laughs> yeah, yeah. starts. But it, it's really cool. And that's why I love that show, dude, because it's they they constantly are just in the know and know how to, like, take maybe not necessarily negative press, but somewhat pessimistic press about like or what can these dudes really know about running and signing talent and they're turning this into a positive and making it like into a storyline and who knows where it's going to go and it's kind of maybe it's a little bit of trolling maybe it's a little bit of storytelling but th that whole situation right there the whole two or three minutes it lasted i was just like so like wrapped up into yeah. it like this is fucking awesome dude and uh they uh, another couple little news bits too um they also invaded Bar Wrestling, which is owned by Joey Ryan, and Defy Wrestling uh, last week. The Young Bucks, Hangman Page, uh, SCU, Cody, and Brandy, just basically all elite wrestling just showed up at these places. And there's also rumor that uh, this weekend there's a Bellator um, pay-per-view going on where Jake Hager, a.k.a. Jack Swagger, <laughs> the guy who I said was pissed that won the Lucha Underground title. Um, he's getting into MMA, and it's his first fight. Now, he's a legit wrestler, collegiate athlete. Uh, he was Oklahoma City Sooner. Uh, by God! He was one hell of a collegiate wrestler. Um, and as we all know, if you're a wrestler in the MMA game, you usually... <laughs> oh, you throw up on the floor again. Yeah. yeah. Usually can dominate, uh, given the proper skill set and talent. Uh, look at Brock Lesnar. Um they are planning on invading this show. Now, how that's going to happen, what exactly does the invading mean, I don't know. But AEW has their focus on this event. And I think it's it's really fucking cool because you don't know what's going to happen. We may be sitting here next week like, oh, did you see the stupid shit they did? Or, you know, it could be the complete opposite. Like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, AEW went to fucking Bellator and did this. Like, got in the ring and super kicked all the MMA guys. Yeah, that's what I think at some point it's going to get to that in wrestling, you know? Yeah. Like someone, like Scott Coker and the boys at fucking Bellator, like, okay, we know what wrestling is on that, you know? We need a little rub off them. Maybe they, you know, and vice versa. Let's fucking plan something out because they're going to sign this guy. And uh, Jack Swagger's a guy who wants to do both, much like Bobby Lashley did in his time in uh, TNA Impact Wrestling was uh, he fought for Bellator and then he wrestled. And he, he managed both of them pretty damn well. So who knows what angle could play out of that. I think it's very interesting to say it's the very, least. very, very interesting. Yeah. So very we'll nice. see. We will see. Yes. And you will see. I got one more thing. All right. So this is what I want to do. I'm introducing a segment that we're going to try a couple times. And it's literally called Juice Educates Nothing Real Quick. And I'm going to pick a wrestler that I'm curious about or a group or something. And you are on the fly going to tell me that person's storyline as far as you understand it up to the present point. So the first group that I want to go for mm -hmm. is instead of watching a bunch of videos, which I'm going to end up doing anyways, right. is uh, at Warrior Wrestling 3, the first group that was promoted to be one of the people, uh, one of the groups wrestling. And it's the guys, uh, what are the, I, SCU? 
Is that what it is? <laughs> yes. Did I say this right? is the worst place I've ever been? <laughs> so there's sticks. They do like a shtick because I've seen some of that. That worst place, this worst place. Yeah, that. yeah. So what I'm asking you is like, tell me what they're about. Like, what what is their thing? Do you know who is it? It's three dudes. It's three dudes. It's uh Christopher Daniels, Scorpio Sky, and Frankie Kazarian. Uh, all these dudes, from what I understand, are they're pretty much up there in age, but still gifted as hell in ring and can still go as much as you already know uh, if you've seen All In or any of that shit. Um, they basically kind of—I don't know if I don't really know if they have like a shtick other than that. You but know, that, I mean, but that shtick is everything. That's is the what's, worst thing. Yeah, that's kind of what's gotten them over, and they'll play off of it in different ways. But uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, big comic guys. I think all three of those dudes really like big comic. Uh, Scorpio Sky actually did some MMA, so he's legit the real deal. You know, super nice dude. Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, like I think they're all in their forties. Um, and it's just it's super impressive to see how long these guys have been doing it and at a fucking awesome level, like especially dude, all three of them. They're great. It's it's weird because they could all three be the same guy, but they're not, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like they so that's when I say they don't have a shtick other than the, you know, worst place I've ever been. They they really don't. They're kind of just like themselves. And it works. I know uh, Kazarian plays bass. He's a big uh, metalhead. I think he's got a band. They do a lot of shit out in California. I'd be lying if I told you what the name is. Uh, but you could hit him up on Twitter and find that out for yourself. Because I did, then I forgot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I know uh, Scorpio had a big background in uh, MMA. Christopher Daniels, a guy who was on the fuck the first Ring of Honor pay per view ever. Also a former Ring of Honor World Champion, um, former X Division Champion in TNA Impact, as well as. Tag team champion with AJ Styles, the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels at one point was his gimmick. Um, he also did some shit on WWE TV, like Velocity or Sunday Night Heat or some shit. He was like enhancement talent, I think. But yeah, the long and thick of it, that's those guys. Oh, and Frankie Kazarian and um, Cody Rhodes also have American Rebel Cigar Company, which is just came out because both those guys are big nice. cigar dudes. And well, I, I had I have to bring this up too real quick because there, <laughs> there's a segment. Um, this new dude, uh, MJF, he's kind of like a a pompous motherfucker, dude. Like Cody brings him, he's like, "Hey, this is our new talent we just signed." You know, and he's like super nice and humble to everybody, cool. And then when Cody walks away. Listen here, motherfucker. And he's like talking <laughs> shit to him, and it's awesome. Like he, did, it, they, they show him in the latest episode of BTE, and he's sitting there with Frankie Kazarian, and he's got the cigar. It's like, what is this? Is this fucking dog shit or something? He throws it down on the ground, and then like all of a sudden, Cody walks up on him. He's like, hey, is everything going? He's like, oh yeah. It's like, man, this guy's fucking awesome. He's like a really great guy, really nice. It's like, ah, oh, drop my cigar on the floor, and like Cody takes Frankie's and he gives it to him, uh, MJF. I said, Kira, you can have that That one's on me. I was like, oh, thanks, dude. Like, I said, all right, let's go. I want to introduce you to a few more people. I said, okay, I'm coming. He turns around and gets his face. He's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> talking shit to Frankie Kazarian, and then he walks off. Um, and as he leaves, uh, Kazarian's just like, guy's a fucking dick. I really like him. <laughs> it's just, it, it works, man, on so many levels for me. Uh, it, it's super funny, man, how they're doing that shit, dude. It's a lot to learn from. Yeah, they've uh, they've all been around the block. Like I said, uh, you can catch stuff they've done if you got the Global Wrestling Network. Um, that app is on pretty much every platform right now. I know the Ring of Honor Honor Club. They have a ton of work on that. Um, yeah, check these guys out. They're pretty badass. Cool. I see you. You also see them at uh, Warrior Wrestling Four. So let's wrap it up. Everybody, <laughs> where's Dave Chappelle with the wrap it up box? Huh? <laughs> um, you can find us on Instagram at Juice Pro Wrestling, on Facebook at Juice Pro Wrestling. We also have the JP Wu. That's the Juice Pro Wrestling Universe group where you can interact with all kinds of wrestling fans from around the world. Uh, please do so. We very much appreciate it. And I love watching what the hell you guys post. Some of it's pretty freaking nuts. Uh, so, yeah, get on that. You can also hit us up on any podcast platform. Uh, check out our YouTube, which is jpdub.com. Hit up uh, greendoornetwork.com for not just this show, but all kinds of shows, podcasts. They'll give you all kinds of entertainment, whether you like football, football, whether you like music, oh, yeah. whether you like a bunch of weird dudes chatting about God knows what. We got it all for you. Shout out to Gigi Stalin. <laughs> I really can't describe their show. It's just, it's uh, an amalgam of. Uh, I don't even know. 
I can't even tell. <laughs> Sometimes it's political, and then it's mostly just whatever each yeah. one of them individually want to watch. Yeah, and yeah. They get really in depth with whatever they talk about. Yeah, they do. So it's kind of all over the place. So yeah. check all them guys out. Uh, we also, if you're into movies and TV, you got Pricks on Flicks. Check them guys out. Musically Meditated. John G. You said, or you said John G's not a part of a. Uh... John G's in the off season. He's a fantasy. Oh, he's in the office in the he's off season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Yep. Kicking a few stone cold Steve Wise back. Oh, hell yeah. John G, you want to drink some beer? What? Football? What? Touchdowns? What? Super Bowl? I'm <laughs> sorry. I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> but yeah, check us out on any podcast platform. You can call us and leave us a message. Um, tell us what you like, what you don't like. 1 872 267 4199. And I believe that's it. Oh, hey, and for all you gamers out there, um, hit up at Juicefuge uh, if you're playing on Xbox Live and get down on some cyber debauchery with the juice. That's at Juicefuge. If you don't know how to spell it, it's J U I C I F U G E. Now you know. (laughs) You like it. He shoots, he scores. Hey. For all you out there listening, thank you. We appreciate it. We appreciate the love. And uh, keep it greasy so it goes down easy. We'll see you next week. When I'm up, when I'm up, when I'm up, when I'm up, when I'm up. You gonna do sex to me?